Awesome. So it is 11.05 a.m. and it is Thursday morning. So this is an about me video. I figured I'd do a quick one before I have therapy in 55 minutes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been good lately. Like I've been really feeling good and, you know, I'm just positive and... I came across a post one of my friends made about how, you know, her life has been kind of bad lately and she's upset and frazzled and all that shit. And it reminded me of um, Stone Cold's podcast. I used to watch it on WWE Network years ago. And the one episode with Big Show where he was on there and he talked about how his career was in a rut and how... You know, he gave himself a mental reset by when he was cleaning his father's gun out. When it was all clean and it was empty, you know, he put it to his temple, pulled the trigger. He was like, I'm dead, so now what? And it was a mental reset for him because, you know, when you are whatever situation you're in, um, you know, shit can be difficult to where it, you your mental health overrides your sense of focus and you want to you know you just want to escape and get away from it and try to make sense of what the fuck's going on you know it's difficult and especially nowadays you know with the bullshit uh what the fuck was it um <clears throat> oh that's the goddamn ticket <sighs> Oh, uh, yeah, the bullshit in D.C. yesterday with uh, Trump terrorists and all that bullshit. <laughs> and COVID and, you know, lack of, you know, six feet apart and all that shit. Even though people don't stay six feet apart. <laughs> but, you know, I can see how it's stressful for everybody. But for me, I don't really let it bother me. I don't watch the news. I don't get sucked into drama and whatnot. I really don't like yesterday like I made a video a quarantine David about how I was happy with the racial draft podcast yeah I'm out of that now <laughs> yeah didn't work out because they didn't like me saying retard so whatever I learned my lesson yeah they subconsciously they were expecting me to be like the previous delegate that they got along with but eh. I mean, they're nice people. They're not bad. They're just, eh, whatever. I'm done with that. I learned. <laughs> I should have figured by the the first time being kicked out, that was my warning not to stick around. But nah, I was like, eh, I'll give the benefit of a doubt. But eh, that's what happens. So anyway, I don't let it bug me. I'm just like, eh, live and learn. Uh, so, you know, I've been through the ringer. A whole fucking lot, if you haven't noticed, by my About Me vids. If you've ever watched any of them, you know where I'm coming from. I have CPTSD, which, thank fuck, hasn't flared up in a long goddamn time. Proud of that. Very proud of that. That was a fist, not a... <laughs> um, my stress has been zero lately like really it's just been zero <laughs> I've been, so i've been on this nice positivity kick and whatnot but you know if you're feeling you know down in the fucking dumps do a mental reset honestly like it will do such wonders for you you know do the mental reset of you're dead Literally, like, I'm not encouraging death or suicide or anything in that matter. I'm just saying, do a mental reset of your debt. And if you need an, if you need an a verbal example of, oof, that's one. If you need a verbal demonstration, here it is, okay? So, you're dead, okay? You're dead, you're six feet under. Bugs are eating your corpse, all that shit. Family's grieving over you. Friends are grieving over you. Your stuff, it's kept for a while, and then after a time, 
it gets donated somewhere or it gets hand down to your younger family members or whatever. Or if you have nobody, you aren't remembered at all. You know, you had your, you know, you had everything in front of you that you enjoyed and now it's gone because you're dead. You know, you don't have it no more. If you have family, okay, so you're dead, you're the one, your widow that you left behind, they grieve for however many, they grieve for X amount of years. If you have kids, they struggle to understand why mommy and daddy, mommy or daddy isn't there anymore. Um, eventually, widow moves on, finds someone else that makes them feel better about themselves and helps them recover from losing you. Your kids will remember you, depending on what age they are. And they will, you know, call the other, the new parent, mommy or daddy. Whatever happens with that. Uh, your pets will miss you if you have pets. And eventually, you know, they'll grow to forget you too. You know, it, it's a habit. It's how things go, you know. You know, you're dead and gone. You know, not everybody will remember you for... The first couple years and then years to come but as time goes on they'll find new things and new friends and move on with their life and whatnot you know it's not a dig at you for being dead it's just you know you're gone but you left your impact on them now somebody else is coming along to make new impacts on them and so on and so forth it's a it's a constant cycle of this you know, if you're having a bad fucking day, I mean, if you think killing yourself is the best way out, you're wrong. Just confront your shit. Like I do. It's not hard to do. All you gotta do is sit down in front of a camera and just vent. That's all you gotta do. Get all that negativity out of your system. Get all the crying out of your system. And it's okay to cry, because crying is normal. I've done enough of that shit, you know? Like, I have been through so much mental... I've been through every form of rape but sexual, and I'm still here. And I gotta tell you, if you... <laughs> if you time traveled back to when I was, let's see, 96... 20, that's 25 years, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Gum don't taste right now. Yeah. If you time traveled 25 years ago, a quarter of a century ago to 96, when I was a kid, when I was nine years old, actually, and told me flat out that shit would get better, would get worse before it got better, I wouldn't know how to respond to that. I'd be like, whatever. Or I'd probably cry more, depending on my mood. But, yeah. Like, if you went back to 96, because that was when shit, like, really took a turn for me. Yeah. Drooling. Yeah. <clears throat> That's too. That's much better. Um... Yeah, if you told me at nine years old that shit would get worse before I got better... I wouldn't know how to respond to that. But, you know, it is what it is. And I, you know, looking back, I could change so much shit that I went through. And it would probably put me on a different path. But, you know, I accept my damage. I accept my shortcomings. I accept my damage. And all the rapes I've gone through to be who I am today. Like, now I have peace of mind, which is fucking awesome. I have happiness. You know how rare that shit is? Happiness? Christ. <laughs> Some people gotta dish out money to a hooker to get happiness. Some people gotta buy shit to get happiness. I have genuine happiness. 
I still buy shit to get happy, but, you know, that's a whole different thing, because, you know, it's something that I really wanted, versus, you know, filling a void, you know, but I'm just, I'm so happy to have this nice happiness, you know, I don't like being hollow, and I've talked about hollow before, that's when you're just, you know, like, down the dumps, don't feel anything, obdurate, nihilistic, um, just don't care, honestly, and you just cruise through life, you're just wading through life, like nothing, nobody else matters but you, or like you don't matter at all, just that feel and shit, that's how I was before, now I'm just like, oh, I'm positive as a motherfucker, <laughs> And if you're wondering, like, what the fuck am I smoking or snorting? Nothing. Well. My belly button. <sighs> mm, belly button. <laughs> yeah, I get high off my belly button, man. You ever done that shit? I'll take a gram of that shit. <laughs> Oh my god, like, mm -mm -mm. but no, I just feel good, because the more negativity you hold on to, the greater your chances are that fear is going to rule your life for a long time, and Dune said it best, fear is the mind killer, I don't know the whole fucking quote, but I know the first part, um, so yeah, it's like, don't give in to fear. I mean, the minute you give in to that shit, that was all she wrote. Am I afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid, but I don't let it rule my fucking life. I don't, you know, sit in front of a TV all day and, you know, worry about what's going to happen or whatever. You know, I'm just, I'm in pure bliss. I'm in a good mood. You know, I'm focused on my writing. I'm focused on my relationship with Bella. I'm happy with how things are going. You know, I'm staying positive. Why the fuck am I going to get mad about shit? Whatever. Block and move on. That's how I roll. I mean, seriously, people get so goddamn invested in an argument on Twitter. It's stupid and retarded. <laughs> like, damn. Get a life. Ugh. A case in point with the, art, with the you know, argument on Twitter... <laughs> somebody posted a comic page from Star Wars The High Republic showing uh, whoever the fuck it was with their lightsaber and they used it to cut down a tree and then it stopped like so far into the tree and people one person didn't understand what was going on another person, one made fun of it one didn't understand it and another one just didn't get it. I'm like, and I'm like, I see, I'm like, hmm. You know, it is a new era in Star Wars. And I'm like, okay, so the blade is stuck in the tree. Maybe it's density. Because I'm automatically, like, I get all analytical and shit. I'm like, hmm. Maybe the tree has stronger density than the lightsaber does. Maybe the energy of the lightsaber isn't as strong as it used to be. And then this guy comes in. <laughs> And he's like, well, energy beats energy. Energy doesn't change at all. I'm like, okay, but this is Star Wars. Shit can change. <laughs> like, damn. And it turns this whole fucking debate over some shit. And I'm like, if you're that dissatisfied, why don't you just contact the author and ask him? I mean, that's my solution to everything. If you're that upset about it, contact the author and ask them what the fuck's going on. Or be patient and wait and find out what's going on. I don't know. I mean, I have many theories about that kind of shit, but that's a different video. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just... If you're feeling down and you think shit's going wrong, just do a mental reset. Just do the mental reset of you're dead. Like, seriously, like, it will give you such clarity. And you'll understand how good you actually have it versus how you think you really have it. Like, seriously, it's so 
damn good to get all the anger and sadness out. Seriously. It really is. Like, I've done it before. Fuck. Did, what, did, what was the last one I did? Uh, I did that where my parents were dead. That was fun. I haven't done the video yet, though, but I did it uh, sometime last year. I forget when. Because I was thinking, I was like, okay, so they're dead. I'm by myself. I have to help Gene out and all this shit. So, yeah, it was rough. But, you know, I got through it, and I felt better. You know, it's just one of them things. A lot, everybody, all of us. And I don't like to, I don't like to, like, you know, do a blanket pronoun and shit, but, you know, all of us compartmentalize our emotions a lot. I know you do. I do it, too, so much. I used to be so bad about it. I was like, ah, I'm out in the open. <laughs> I'm like, why am I going to compartmentalize? Let's throw it up to 11. <laughs> oh, God. Mm. So, yeah. So, that's what I got for you today. Now, I'll be back <coughs> later on with maybe one or two videos, depending on how I feel. I meant to do shit yesterday, but that didn't work out because I got sidetracked and stuff. Oh, actually, no. Three videos. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to go over here, upload this motherfucker, and relax until therapy. So, till next time. Oh, no. Stay tuned. <laughs>